I'm Kelly Grimes, and I'm the Director of Community Engagement for Leap to Success. We're a women's empowerment organization with a mission to educate and empower women who are overcoming domestic violence, homelessness, and any other major life challenge to reach their greatest potential. We feel so blessed to be able to offer this self-care for stressful times series, webinar series, because indeed, friends, we are in very stressful times. We have been offering these uh, every week for the last nine weeks. Perhaps you have been able to join us for every episode, or perhaps this is your first. We're grateful you're here. We know that when we take the time to really deeply care for ourselves in this time, that we can be resilient, that we can be a beacon of support and calm for other people in this very chaotic storm that we're in in these times. Um, we know that we all share uh, the experience of being in a giant storm, and yet our experience of it may be different based on what boat we're in. And so we started this webinar series to support our community partners who are out doing the frontline work, really, really important work, serving our community members, some of them the most vulnerable that are impacted by this pandemic. And then we've expanded out. We've expanded out to our Leap to Success community and beyond because we know that the tools that we're teaching through this webinar series have the ability to support all of us. And we know that um, being in a place where we feel more grounded, we're able to adjust and be resilient and adapt to the challenges that come our way. And then we're able to share that with others. So I invite you to share anything that you've learned um, on the webinar today uh, and beyond with other people so that we create a ripple effect and more grounded and supported community. I want to let you know that I normally have uh, Dana Bristol-Smith, who is our executive director, as my co-host for this. Um, she's not able to be with us today. She is uh, modeling wonderful self-care, and so I'm grateful for her inspiration and all that she brings to our organization and to our community. And I want to introduce you to Alyssa, who is my co-pilot and most amazing technological guru, who's going to welcome you and share a few tips with you this morning. Hi, everyone. Super excited to have you on the webinar with us today. Um, a couple of different things. This is going to be interactive. We will have questions to answer that you can interact with other participants and with Kelly as the host for today's webinar. So if you would like to interact with other participants, make sure before you send your message that your settings are set to all panelists and attendees. Otherwise, Kelly and I are the only ones who will see your response. And also, if you are interested in getting a replay of this or watching any of the other videos in our self-care for stressful times seminar, you can find it at our playlist on YouTube or our self-care library that we've put up on our website. And I will be putting those links in the chat. Thank you so much, Alyssa. So we're going to be looking at releasing overwhelm. Now, I suspect most of us can connect to that feeling of overwhelm, dealing with so many different responsibilities and emotions and experiences that we feel weighted down and overwhelmed. So we're going to look at what are those things that are contributing to our own overwhelm? And then look at some tools um, in order to give ourselves permission to release some of it. It's really hard when we're feeling overwhelmed um, to know what the next best inspired step is. So one of the tools we know is so important in these times are the mindfulness tools. These tools that we have to center and calm ourselves so that we can move out of our amygdala that fight flight part of our brain and back into our prefrontal cortex where we have uh, our compassion and empathy, our problem solving, our understanding of consequences, all of our higher cognitive functioning. So I'm going to invite you into a meditation this um, today so that you can ground and settle. You know, the beautiful thing about uh, meditation is that you can use it at any time. And it's particularly helpful when we're feeling overwhelmed to actually give ourselves that time and space just to settle 
and connect with ourself. I oftentimes refer to it as like a coming home to ourselves. So I'm going to invite you to settle in where you are, to feel your feet on the ground. And if you're comfortable, close your eyes or just soften them down so you're not getting a lot of visual stimulation. And bring a beautiful spirit of curiosity and non-judgment to yourself in this moment. And just simply notice how it feels to be sitting where you are. Notice how it feels to have your feet on the ground. Notice where your palms are resting. And take a few deep breaths in and out, following the breath in and feeling how it feels to exhale. Once you do that three times, three cycles of breath in and out. And now I invite you to bring your awareness to your body. Notice if there's any place in your body that you're feeling any tension or tightness in this moment. And if you do notice any of those areas, see if you can allow yourself to relax a little bit. Allow your body to soften where you're feeling that tension and tightness. Now notice if there's anywhere you're feeling any pain or discomfort. And see if you can breathe a little bit more deeply into those spots, sending loving kindness and compassion to those places where you're feeling pain in this moment. And now notice if there's anywhere in your body that you don't have any sensation at all. And perhaps bring some curiosity. I wonder why that is. And on your next exhale, release awareness of your body and come back to your breath. Notice how it feels to have your chest rise with your breath and then fall as you exhale. Notice where else you feel movement in your body as you breathe. Give yourself permission to have a full body breath. Oftentimes when we're overwhelmed, we have shallow breathing. Invite in a deeper breath. And now I invite you to be a curious observer of your thoughts. Bring your full awareness to your thoughts for a moment. See if you can identify any theme in your thinking. Perhaps you're having an anxious thought or a judging thought. Perhaps you have your to-do list rushing through your brain in this moment. Whatever it is, see if you can Avoid chasing after it and yet be able to observe it, to notice it, to notice what the content of your thoughts are in this moment. And on your next exhale, release awareness of your thoughts and come back to your breath again. Tune in to your whole being in this moment and notice if you have any feelings of overwhelm, any feelings of anxiety. Notice where those feelings show up in your body. Even when you bring the idea of overwhelm, where do you feel that in your body? What impact does that have? Give yourself permission on your next ale, exhale to release some of the feeling of overwhelm in your breath. 
And as you inhale, invite in some spaciousness. So you're gonna exhale. Any feelings of overwhelm and inhale. A sense of spaciousness and possibility. And allow yourself to do that for five cycles of breath. So exhaling any overwhelm and inhaling a sense of spaciousness around you. Now I invite you to place your hand on your heart. Breathe in to the beauty of who you are, to the blessing of who you are in the world, and acknowledge something that you're grateful for about yourself in this moment. What gifts do you bring? Is it love? Is it compassion? Is it kindness? Is it gratitude? Notice for yourself what you're grateful for about yourself and that you're offering in this time of overwhelm in the world. What is your blessing that you bring to the world? And on our last few breaths together, I invite you in your mind as you breathe in to say, I breathe into this moment. And as you have exhale, I have arrived. I breathe into this moment. I have arrived. And I invite you to allow your eyes to float open and just to connect to this moment. You know, oftentimes when we're overwhelmed, it's really hard to get clear about what we wanna do. It all feels so big. Giving yourself permission to pause, ground yourself, connect with yourself, check in, is such a powerful practice. And we've been teaching different mindfulness practices over the last nine episodes. And you can go back and listen to others as well so that you have a whole, um, tool chest full of them, full of options of things to do because being calm is what you have control over when we're overwhelmed and things are out of our control and we have a sense of chaos around us. I don't know um, if you've had that similar experience, but to me, um, it seems like there are these waves of change happening consistently. Um, things are still unknown. Um, we get some information, then we get different information, and sometimes we can feel overwhelmed in the unknowing. We can be overwhelmed with a lot of contradictory information, can feel overwhelming to make a decision and decide what's the next best step. Sometimes we can be overwhelmed by all of our feelings. I don't know if you've had that experience, but sometimes we can feel a lot of grief in, in our own suffering or other people's suffering. Sometimes we can feel a sense of hopefulness about the future. Then we might feel angry that things are out of our control. Like we may have a whole variety of emotions in each day that are even more um, intense uh, than normal, right? Because we are in unprecedented times. We're not in quote unquote normal times. And so we may have different emotions than we've had before and that can be overwhelming. Long to-do lists. One of the things that we talked about in our last episode was these really high expectations that we may hold for ourselves, a sense of, of striving for perfectionism that can cause us to feel overwhelmed. And they can actually um, be demonstrated in these very long to-do lists. So if you are one that has very long to-do lists, that can be super overwhelming, right? We know that. Um, other things that can be is it could be um, in uh, having a health challenge ourselves can be overwhelming. 
Um, being separated from our loved ones can be overwhelming. Uh, caring for other people in our lives can be overwhelming. We've certainly heard that folks trying to care for children and work from home and find that balance can be totally overwhelming and really difficult. And one of the things that I've noticed is um, with a higher level of stress, I feel that, but I also experience other people's high levels of stress. Um, and, and so that can sometimes feel overwhelming to be able to differentiate what's my stress from what's someone else's stress and how I can stay with um, detached compassion where I can really hold space for other people, but I don't walk away carrying their stress. Uh, some other things um, that can be stressful is um, any of the disappointments. I know that there were a lot of graduations for um, folks over the weekend, and they looked very different than they would have um, pre-COVID times, right? Um, and people were creative and found ways to still celebrate, but they were also tinged with a sense of disappointment that things are different that we don't get to have um, big groups of people at this time together and that that can um, feel overwhelming and sad and, and, and especially when people are wondering when, when will we? And, and we don't have those answers. So sitting in the unknown can be. I think the other thing that can be really overwhelming is when our coping strategies are stretched beyond capacity. And we certainly know that that's easy to happen um, when there is a crisis. And so, you know, coming back to kindness and compassion for ourselves is really, really important. So I'm wondering for you, I've shared some, some ideas um, that can be overwhelming. So I'm wondering what are contributing to your feelings of overwhelm in this moment? Um, it would be so helpful to know because the first thing um, that really helps most of us is to know we're not alone. Sometimes if we feel really alone and isolated, that can be overwhelming. Thinking we have to do it all ourselves, take care of everything, this big you know, challenge and crisis and et cetera, that we are responsible for all of that and can almost feel this deep, powerful, heavy, loaded backpack that we're walking around with um, that can feel um, like overwhelm. And um, someone shared that too many decisions, depending on someone else, and the someone else that is unsettled or undecided can cause overwhelm. So if you're, you're having to wait for somebody else to make some decisions for you to know next best steps, it can be very overwhelming um, to have a person not in a position to make the decision um, or unclear themselves. Um, another person shared living in the unknown. And, and we are being tested in many ways to find more and more comfort in the discomfort of living in the unknown. Um, because we've been in this for weeks now and there is not a lot of clarity about next steps. Um, and so we, we perhaps are going to be living in the unknown for, for a longer period of time. Another person shared that processing grief and loss um, contributes to overwhelm. And absolutely. And there's so much grief and loss. You know, there's the grief and loss of uh, uh, experiences in this moment. There's also the grief and loss of a dream. We may have had a sense like, this is what the summer was gonna look like, and now it's gonna look very different. And so giving ourselves permission to grieve those losses and to give, um, you know, affirm and nurture and free, bring compassion to those feelings is really important in the process of releasing overwhelm, right? Not that we ignore it and we push it down and put it in a box, that we actually make some space. That's why when I invited you to breathe in and create spaciousness, it's because spaciousness in some ways is the antidote to overwhelm. Overwhelm is like this contraction and this heaviness on us. And spaciousness, you know, allowing us to let go of some of that and create some spaciousness around allows us to connect to the hope and possibility that's really difficult to connect to when we're overwhelmed. Another person shared, um, uh, my daughter's graduating from high school and not able um, to take her um, sadness away. Oh, thank you for sharing that. That's a really, really important point. When we love other people and we watch them suffer, to me, that is way more difficult than suffering I would have of my own. 
right? And it can be completely overwhelming if we have an expectation of ourselves that we can, right? As a mom, we want to, um, or a parent or a friend or whoever wants to be able to, to take someone's you know, sadness or suffering away. And yet truly we can't in that way, but we can go alongside them and be of comfort. Be somebody that has a non-anxious presence. I love that you're on this webinar because you're learning tools to be calm in the center of this storm and take that calmness out. And that is healing. Whether you can take away someone's sadness or not, you can be there as a loving, compassionate presence, and that is healing. I um, want to share some of the other things that uh, were shared. I'm trying to be, um, po stay positive and faithful in my faith, um, but it can be hard with negative people. Absolutely. I mean, the fact is, is that everybody reacts to stress differently, right? Some people and try to find lots of tools and strategies and, and ways of staying in faith and positivity. And, and other people feel um, like the stress actually triggers more negativity or, or criticisms or um, complaints or other things. And, and it's a balance. Um, we can bring compassion and, and understand that people are having a hard time too. And we can also set boundaries that we need to. And so for some of us, you know, releasing overwhelm might be setting some boundaries. So whether it's listening to the news or um, talking with people um, who are in a really negative place and not able to shift out of that, it may be that um, for us to care for ourselves in these stressful times, we need to set some boundaries around that. Um, uh, some other things that were shared is dealing with medical staff when family is in the hospital. Oh my gosh, absolutely. And that's more and more difficult with people not being able to go to the hospital and advocate for their loved ones. I can't tell you how many people I've heard, and I personally have had an experience of that. It was very painful um, to not be able to go and, and play a really active role in support and love and advocacy for a family member. Um, some other things causing overwhelm, working parents and distant learning with three children at home. Oh my goodness, absolutely. So much respect um, for people that are balancing everyone's needs, right? I think it can be overwhelming to try to balance people's needs because in truth, we often have differing needs. So how do we approach that? Uh, some other things um, shared uh, is the silver lining is that we can't distract ourselves. A lot of us haven't been right, haven't been right for a while now. We haven't, we have no choice but to sit with ourselves and really address our in, inner internal troubles. Right. I mean, there, there is part of this is an opportunity. And I love the mindfulness practices that give us tools to bring self-awareness. When I asked all of you, you know, where you felt overwhelmed in your bodies, that's important information. The more you cultivate an awareness of that, the more that that's going to give you a sign. Oh, I'm getting to this point and I need to make some other nurturing choice in this moment so that I don't keep feeding this feeling of overwhelm. Um, when we paid attention to our thoughts, when we're overwhelmed, if we get into a place where we end up um, adding to it, by, you know, having more anxious thoughts and, oh my gosh, I haven't done this well enough and this person needs me and almost like going through your to-do list over and over again in your thoughts, that, that tends to make it even worse. So noticing yourself, giving yourself um, permission to pay attention is a great act of love and care and choosing to use this as a time of self-reflection is really beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. And um, some other things is being creative with various deadlines in a uh, different life um, happening um, at the same time. Um, uh, look, family looking for the usual grounding and needing to be there for them. Um, we play a lot of roles in our lives, right? So depending on how many roles we play, we can become overwhelmed with just the amount of um, uh, need that people have for us in our lives. Um, another person said, um, balancing both uh, working from home and on distance learning as a single parent, absolutely. So again, um, you know, um, feeling all the responsibility on your own. Um, Oh, and what was shared earlier was life areas happening all at the same time. So lots of different things happening at the same time. Um, um, so 
I want to give you a few tools to let go of some of this. It's really important to know that you are not alone. I hope you heard from other people's experience that they're feeling the overwhelm too. You're not alone in it at all. And so what would it take? What would it take to release some of it? I love this quote from Ann Landers because this, it, it, it's going to require some courage for us to let go of this overwhelm. She says, some people believe holding on and hanging in there are signs of great strength. However, there are times when it takes much more strength to know when to let go than to do it. And so there, there is in these times of uncertainty, taking, using this as an opportunity to know where you want to use your energy and move forward and where you want to set boundaries and step back and pause. And so um, I want to offer you seven, seven things that you can do. The first thing is to pause and check in with yourself. You can do that with the arrival technique. You can do that with stop. That analogy STOP, it stands for stop, take a breath, observe, and then proceed. So you can start to cultivate some practices where you pause and check in with yourself. Number one, important. Number two is check in and see where you feel the overwhelm in your body. What's going on? Where do you feel it? That will be helpful for you to know how you can support yourself is noticing what are the signs. So you don't let it go so far that then you're in a place where um, you feel hopeless or full of despair, right? So we're going to catch things sooner and sooner because we're going to be paying attention. The next thing is to bring compassion and loving kindness to yourself. It's really, really important that we continue to cultivate that because that allows us to um, just give ourselves grace, right? And, and tenderness, be our own best friend. Uh, the next thing is choose one thing that's contributing to your overwhelm and then take one inspired action around that, right? So just choose one thing. Overwhelm tends to feel like um, push us to think we have to attend to everything immediately and that creates more overwhelm. So instead of feeding that, just choose one area. Maybe if you're feeling overwhelmed and you look around and there's a lot of clutter, you might say, you know what, I'm going to clean up my room so that gives me a sense of calm and I at least have that, right? So just choose one thing and choose one step of inspired action and then acknowledge yourself for that. We talked a lot about that in the last episode, how incredibly important it is to acknowledge ourselves. So I, I want to continue to invite you into that practice. And then the last thing I would say is ask for help and support. You don't have to do it all yourself. I know there's folks out there that feel isolated, that are single parents and are taking care of all that. And, and I understand the, the tremendous sense of responsibility that is. And yet I wonder, I wonder if there's somebody there that could support you. Um, even if it's just through Zoom, even if it's just with a phone call. Um, I was on a Zoom learning uh, conversation with quite a few people over the weekend. And there was a 90 year old woman, such a wise woman on the call and she was uh, sharing some of her wisdom. And the one big takeaway from me that she said is, um, you can do great things. Um, she said, and you can do even greater things when you ask for help and support. She said, because there's so much support around you that you don't even know. Um, because so much of the time we think we have to do it ourselves. So I invite you to think about where could you get some support? Where could you ask for some help? So that you could start to put down some of the heaviness of the overwhelm, release some of it, create more spaciousness, and feel more centered and grounded in the next inspired steps that you have. So my question for you is, what is an inspired step or an inspired action you could take this week to release some of the overwhelm and nurture yourself? I think that having one takeaway when you uh, leave a webinar can be a really powerful way. If you think you have to do everything of those seven, it can become overwhelming. But instead, just one thing. Um, and uh, so one of the questions um, here is, how do you overcome pride in efforts to welcome help for others? Um, you know what I've noticed? I've noticed that it feels really good um, to help other people. And so one of the ways that you can trick yourself into doing that is 
offer someone else that gift and that blessing of being there to help you. The fact is, is that we're learning, we are all interconnected through this practice, this whole process of the pandemic. We're interconnected as a whole world and we need each other. And so as exciting and wonderful it is to be of service, it is really a great gift to receive as well. So I invite you to try that on, try that on over the week. Ask for help one time. And sometimes when it's hard to ask for help, um, maybe you could just receive it when it's offered. Because oftentimes people will say, oh, let me help you with that. And we'll say, oh, no, no, you know, um, stretch and allow yourself just to receive help when it's offered. Um, if it's too difficult at first to ask for help. So I invite you to continue with your beautiful practices of mindfulness. Give yourself permission to take one inspired step to release overwhelm this week. Know that you're not alone, that you're held in love and community. We're so grateful that you're part of our Leap to Success community. We're so grateful for the incredible work you're doing in the world. And we hope for you that you will take these times to really deeply care for and nurture yourself so that you can be a beacon of light and hope and positivity in the world. Thank you so incredibly much for being with us here today on this webinar. I am deeply grateful for the opportunity to just share this time and to prioritize caring for ourselves. I hope you have a beautiful, beautiful week, and we look forward to seeing you next week. Take really good care. Bye-bye.